Course in Miracles Workbook for Students, Lesson 78. Let Miracles Replace All Grievances. 124, I caught it. Woohoo! This is the first lesson that is written in iamic pentameter. Pentameter. See Cameo 29 for an exp explanation of iamic pentameter. It will be 20 more lessons before the workbook switches into continuous iambic pentameter, given that the manual for teachers shifts into iambic pentameter in especially important passages like the concluding lines of a section, the fact that this lesson is singled out for iambic pentameter seems to place special importance on it perhaps because of the significance of its forgiveness exercise. Yay! Okay. Let miracles replace all grievances. Perhaps it is not quite clear to you that each decision that you make is one between a grievance and a miracle. Each grievance stands like a dark shield of hate before the miracle it would conceal. And if you raise it up before your eyes, you will not see the miracle beyond. Yet all the while it waits for you in light, but you behold your grievances instead. Today we go beyond the grievances to look upon the miracle instead. We will reverse the way you see by not allowing sight to stop before it sees. We will not wait before the shield of hate, but lay it down and gently lift our eyes in silence to behold the Son of God. He waits for you behind your grievances, and as you lay them down, he will appear in shining light where each one stood before. For every grievance is a block to sight, and as it lifts you from the Son of God where he has always been, and as it lifts you, you see the Son of God where he has always been. He stands in light, but you were in the dark. Each grievance made the darkness deeper, and you could not see. Today we will attempt to see God's Son. We will not let ourselves be blind to Him. We will look upon our grievances. So is the scene of the world reverse as we look out toward the truth away from fear. We will select one person you have used as a target for your grievances and lay the grievances aside and look at him. Someone perhaps you fear or even hate, someone you think you love who angers you, someone you call a friend, but whom you see as difficult at times or hard to please, demanding, irritating, or untrue to the ideal he should accept as his according, as his according to the role you set for him. You know the one to choose. His name has crossed your mind already. He will be the one of whom we ask God's Son to be shown to us. Through seeing him behind the grievances that we have held against him, we will learn that what lay hidden while we saw him not is there in everyone. Saw him not is there in everyone and can be seen. Sorry. He who had who was enemy is more than friend when he is freed to take the holy role the Holy Spirit has assigned to him. Let him be Savior unto you today. Such is his role in God, your Father's plan. Our longer practice periods today will place him in this role. We will attempt to hold him in our mind first as we now consider him. We will review his faults, the difficulties we have had with him the pain he caused us, his neglect, and all the little and the larger hurts he gave. We will regard his body with its flaws and better points as well, and we will think of his mistakes and even of his sins. Then let us ask of him who knows this Son of God in his reality and truth, that we may look on him in a different way and see our Savior shining in the light of true forgiveness given on to us. We ask him in the holy name of God and of his Son as holy as himself. Let me behold my Savior in this one, for you have, you have appointed as the one for me to ask to lead me to the holy light in which he stands that I may join him there. 
The body's eyes are closed, and as you think of him who grieved you, let your mind be shown the light in him beyond your grievances. What you have asked for cannot be denied. Your Savior has been waiting long for this. He would be free and make his freedom yours. The Holy Spirit leans from him to you, seeing no separation in God's Son. And what you see through him will free you both. Be very quiet now and look upon your shining Savior. No dark grievances obscure the sight of him. You have allowed the Holy Spirit to express through him the role God gave him that you might be saved. God thanks you for these quiet times today in which you laid your images aside and looked upon the miracle of love the Holy Spirit showed to you instead. The world and heaven join in thanking you for not one thought of God but must rejoice as you are saved and all the world with you. We will remember this throughout the day and take the role assigned to us as part of God's salvation plan and not our own. Temptation falls away when we allow each one we meet to save us and refuse to hide his light behind our grievances. To everyone you meet and to each one you think of or remember from the past, allow the role of Savior to be given that you may share it with him. For you both and all the sightless ones as well, we, pay, we pray. Let miracles replace all grievances. I'm going to go ahead and look for 125 here. 125. And if you raise it up before your eyes, you will not see the miracle beyond. Each grievance stands like a dark shield of hate before the miracle it would conceal. And if you raise it up before your eyes, you will not see the miracle beyond. The lesson's usage of the word miracle is something we look upon, specifically our brother's true nature, is not the standard usage of the word in the Course. In usual Course parlance, the miracle is an agent. It corrects, undoes, dissolves, rearranges, adjusts, shifts, induces, and inverts. It thus brings us or someone else through us from false perception to true perception. That is somewhat different from the usage in this lesson in which the miracle is what true perception looks upon. This may reflect the Course's minority usage of the term miracle to refer to the Son of God. You are a miracle, and that's found in the text. And then we have another footnote to read. 126, which is... Da -da -da -da. Where is it? Oh my goodness, I can't see it anymore. Do you see it? Point it out to me. Hmm. Forgive me, forgive me. I do not see 126. Miracles replace all grievances. It's not on that page. Be very quiet now. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Ah! Okay. Sorry. To everyone you meet and to each one you think of or remember from the past, allow the role of Savior to be given that you may share it with him, for you both and all the sightless ones as well. 126, we pray. Let miracles replace all grievances. 126. Sightless is explained in the first two paragraphs of the lesson, which depict us as holding a dark shield of hate before our eyes and thus allowing sight to stop before it sees. Mm -hmm. All right, so let me read. Da, da, da. I love this book. Alright, now we are going into Alan Watson, Robert Perry, Lesson 78, Let Miracles Replace All Grievances. So the purpose of this lesson is to lay down the dark shield of our grievances and gently lift our eyes in silence to behold the Son of God. 
So our practice periods are longer, two times for 10 to 15 minutes. Select a person about whom you have a grievance. Read the list in paragraph four and choose the person who comes to mind while reading that list. Close your eyes and review how you currently see this person in two ways. First, review their negative deeds and traits, their faults, mistakes, sins, and all the ways in which this person has caused you difficulty and pain. Then review the body and its flaws and better points. Visualizing the body is a great way to get in touch with the grievances you carry toward him. Ah, I'm slipping, sorry. All right, so now you see him as an attacker who stands apart from you. This sentence, however, depicts him as your savior, whose holiness will lead you into the radiance of his true reality, where you will discover that you and he are one. The only thing needed for him to fulfill his role is for you to see him truly, which is what the sentence invites. So you don't say the sentence one, just once. So don't just say the sentence once. Repeat it many times during the practice period. This sentence invites an actual experience from the Holy Spirit, and it invites him to reveal to you this person's shining reality, which lies past your grievances. So this is yet another exercise in asking for some inward thing from the Holy Spirit. Remember the training you've received in this. Wait in stillness. Be very quiet now. And look upon your shining Savior. Wait in confidence. What you have asked for cannot be denied. Periodically re renew your request by repeating this sentence. Let miracles replace all grievances. So frequent reminders in response to temptation whenever you meet or think of or remember someone. Pray, let miracles replace all grievances. This means let the miracle of who you really are Replace the grievances about my grievances about you. Realize that this releases both of you along with everyone else. Now, alrighty. Commentary. If I did not have grievances, everything would be miraculous to me. The contention of the Course is that the truth is obvious and only seems difficult to see because we block it from our awareness with our grievances. The very purpose of a grievance is to conceal the miracle hiding beneath it. The miracle is still there, nevertheless. Today we want to look on miracles. We will reverse the way you see by not allowing sight to stop before it sees. That is what we are in the habit of doing, allowing our sight to stop at the external appearance without moving our perception beyond that to what the appearance is hiding. What we see at first, the external appearance, is our shield of hate. It always shows us things that bring us grief in one way or another. We do not want to stop at that today. We want to lay down the shield and lift our eyes in silence to behold the Son of God. The Son of God is hidden in every one of us. Only our grievances prevent us from seeing Him everywhere. Some of us may be very aware of grievances, other of us may wonder what on earth is being talked about. But if we look honestly at the thoughts in our minds, unless we live in perfect, true perception already, free from all suffering, wholly joyful, always we will find grievances there. We often do not recognize them for what they are. There is a real need for honest self-assessment to recognize the shields in our minds that block the light from our sight. Look at some of the suggestions in 4 or 5 for picking a person with whom to practice this lesson. Someone we fear or even hate is probably obvious to us. If we have such a person in our lives, we can recognize this as a grievance easily. Someone you think you love who angered you is probably also quite clear. Yes, that is a grievance. A friend whom you seem as difficult at whom you see as difficult at times. Is that a grievance that blocks the light for me? Yes, indeed. Someone hard to please? Someone we see as demanding or who we view as being irritating? Are these grievances? Yes. And even someone untrue to the idea he should accept as his according to the role you've set for him. 
How many of us tend to view ourselves as spiritual students of the Course would have recognized this subtle judgment as a grievance? Anything that's not love, any thought that's not love, is a grievance, really, to me. I mean, that's what I... Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Yes, that opinion you hold about that person who hasn't lived up to his or her potential, the one you think and love and care for and show so much concern about, that is also a grievance, blocking the light of the Son of God from your vision. I love the way Jesus says, you know the one to choose. His name has crossed your mind already. You have to laugh out loud at that because that's exactly true. He so often seems to be intimately familiar with the inside of our minds, doesn't he? This exercise is a powerful one. It is also very practical and down to earth, dealing with one specific person in our lives. Let him be Savior unto you today. Him, Savior? You want me to let that person be Savior to me? How can I possibly see him like that? If questions like that come to me, they only demonstrate the illusory solidity of the shield of grievance in my mind. The Son of God is evident in that one if I am willing to let go of my grievances. Now remember, we're just doing an exercise here. Maybe you don't feel ready to entirely let go of all grievances to relinquish your judgment of this person forever. Okay, how about just practicing it for 10 or 15 minutes? Just try it on for size. See what it feels like. That is all that is being asked. This is how we save the world by just this kind of practice. Christ is waiting in each of us to be released. You have the power to release him and everyone around you today. Simply by looking past your grievances and seeing the Christ in them. The Holy Spirit in your brothers and sisters leans from them to you, seeing no separation in God's Son. By allowing your brother to play the role of Savior in your mind, you have allowed the Holy Spirit to express through him the role God gave him that you might be saved. You have seen him as he is, and that vision in your mind will awaken his to see the truth about himself. You will call it out of him through your faith. This is how we play the role of Savior ourselves. As you draw it forth from your brothers, their gratitude will teach you the truth about yourself, and you will realize that something in you has manifested in saving grace to lift your brother. What you have given, you must have had in order to give it. Thus, the salvation, excuse me, the salvation you have given him is yours, and you recognize it because you gave it. This is how the process works. We can practice it even in our minds with people from our past. So I take the role assigned to me by God. I choose today to let miracles replace all grievances in my mind. Whenever I notice a grievance, I will ask that a miracle replace it. Let me see you, my friend, as my Savior today. Thank you for being there. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to give. Lesson 78, Let Miracles Replace All Grievances. I love you.